I'm Mark Lurie. Paul K. Vincent Dupont. The, the presidency got started when, let's say, about 1990, I think it was. And uh, I, 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 there was a retreat that I didn't attend. And then I get this call from JR on his way back from the treat, retreat. And he said, hey, we're going to be having a presidency for MSIA. John Morton's going to be stepping down as president. And Paul's going to be the president. And Vincent's going to be like the second advisor to the president and then you'll be the, the first and then you'll be the second advisor to the presidency president and it'll be like a presidency and so that was the first that that you know I knew that we were going to be doing that and um, kind of uh, it was a major shift in terms of administration for MSI and for us you know for the three of us yeah I actually remember it when uh, Jia approached me at Prana uh, he was in the reception office down there and, and said are you ready to be president of MSIA and I said well you know whatever you want and um, he said well you know you'll be president and Mark and Vanson will be your inner counselors and you'll also have other counselors that you will be talking with <coughs> and I think at that point I don't know if he mentioned the presidency at that moment but uh, soon after that it was uh, clear that it was a presidency um, I don't remember the, the first time that I became aware of it. Uh, I think the, the retreat that Mark is talking about is probably when Jar first talked to me about it, um, which was in Northern California. Um, and the date, uh, I, I don't recall the date, 89, 90, somewhere like that. Yeah. So what's really great about us working together as a presidency is that we all started, we'd all been working for MSI for years and years and years and really devoted. I started out as Paul Kay's bookkeeping assistant <laughs> and uh, just it got more responsibility as I chose to take it on. So it, I never wanted to be running MSIA administratively, but that's kind of where I ended up just, you know, through my devotion. What's fantastic about the presidency is the consensus leadership and so when we have something that we need to make a decision on, we really talk it through, and uh, that gets to be really fun sometimes because two of us will be going one way and another one will be going the other way, and then sometimes it's one of us is the voice of reason and it, it, it changes. It's not always the same one of us, but um, and because we've been doing this for almost 25 years now, it's just gotten better and better. But it started off it started off great. You know, we I mean, we've never really had any major disagreements, and when we did. JR told us that just means you need to talk it out more, and that's always been our guiding kind of um, theme. Yeah. yeah. I think the, um, in, in some ways it was a natural evolvement. Uh, we all lived at Prana, um, or had lived at Prana, and I had been actual roommates with both Vanson and with Mark. And uh, so we, we'd got to know each other throughout the years. So it's uh, fortunate to be able to work with your friends. I've always said that's probably one of the, the big blessings. And uh, we certainly have our sandpapering, though. It's not uh, always smooth. Uh, but uh, we do talk it out, and that's really the most important thing. You, we, we can't walk away. And uh, also, just the, uh, the conversations or the discussions, although they can get heated, they have to have that mutual respect. So even though we may not agree with each other, we do have to respect. And um, again, always that search for information and uh, using what John Roger has taught us. We have our intuitive faculties, but that has to be backed by some reason behind it. Um, everything Mark and Paul said, I, w I would say also that, that what adds to the mix is that we're all very different, different backgrounds. Of course, there's Mark the surfer dude that grew up on the beach, and there's Paul who grew up in England, and, and of a Jewish background, I grew up in France, went to Jesuit school. Um, so there's quite a, a mix of, of culture, background, education, and uh, I'm the only one who's not an accountant on, on the team. <laughs> Both Paul and Mark were trained as accountants, but I, I was born in a family of bankers, several generations of bankers, so I, 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 it's like in my genes, so to speak. Um, and, but my, my, studying, my studies what took me to veterinary school, which I didn't complete, and then switched over to religious studies. So 
we all have very diverse backgrounds, and, and I think it adds a lot to, to you know, how, what we bring to the table. So it, it really helps give a very thorough type of, uh, uh, you know, study and, and, and exploration of, of different topics. Uh, it's a tough question to answer. I'll, I'll jump in there. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't know where to start, but bottom line is, is the, the ticket home to God. So when, when I think of soul transcendence, it's not just the soul, but it's really transcending beyond soul is, is what I, I got J.R. was talking about. And, uh, and the only way to do that, my understanding, is riding that what, what we call the sound current of God that emanates from God's heart and goes back to God's heart. What they talk about in the Bible, the, the word, you know, the word was spoken and then creation came and through this word, this sound, uh, this stream of, of the word of God, we go back into the heart of God. So, um, and that's what, you know, leads us to the initiation process, and which is, you know, getting back into that stream, back into the heart of God. So tr soul transcendence is basically getting into that stream and, and riding back all the way. And, and uh, there's a lot that goes with it. Um, when when Jared talks, one of the definitions Jared has given is, is to know yourself as God or as divine and as one with God, uh, and not not just as a theory but as a practical reality. Uh, so that that would be one of the definitions that we use a lot. Practically, it's you know practical spirituality essentially. So connecting with the divine inside of us, and then. It's like a radar. We're honing in on it all the time, and it's a very individual process. That's why and it's one thing I like about MSI. There's not a lot of dogma, and you know, it should be this and should do that, etc. It's really you got to find it out for yourself. Everybody seems quite different in how they approach it. Yeah, I would agree with everything Vincent said. It's still transcendence to me. It's it's a very high path and. And it, it's it is just it's free of it has a lot of freedom on it and and it's really about loving yourself knowing your divinity and going you know it's not just get to heaven it's go way past heaven you know connect with that true self and like I said I just I love the freedom uh, when I first got involved with MSI I loved that you could eat hamburgers tell dirty jokes and and be spiritual and I was like yeah sign me up. Uh, I, I like the word soul transcendence. There's just something nice about it, but uh, I wouldn't hazard a guess as to what it means or how to explain it. Um, a lot of my involvement in MSIA, really, I've, I've thought about it quite a bit over the years and, and why am I doing this? And it really comes down to uh, John Roger, uh, the man, and John Roger, the, the energy. And um, he had something that I was looking for. And my approach really has been, okay, well, if I can attach myself to his coattails, maybe I will have uh, a chance. And um, so that's been the, the plan, just trying to stick with it still. Although at some point I was willing to let go. Um, unfortunately, John Roger just said, as I've said many times, that, uh, that uh, he wasn't going to let go. I could let go if he wanted to, but uh, he wasn't. He was going to do his part, and so uh, that's the kind of his commitment to me has been um, why I'm still here because I'm still trying to match that commitment myself. W one thing that's great about the three of us is we, like Vincent was kind of saying earlier, we all have our areas of expertise, and you know, I handle financial, computer and uh, you know, just administrative kind of stuff, HR. I love that, I love the back office. Um, I do a little bit of facilitating. Um, and, and what's great is I have the support of Vincent and Paul. When, we, when there's big decisions, we can bounce it off and you know, they have their other perspectives. And then same thing for what they do. And Vincent's gotten a lot more involved in some areas that I used to, to handle. And so now it's even more powerful because I have the background and then he's doing it and I can support him and vice versa. Um, and just it's I got involved in MSI because it's a, it's a spiritual path where you validate your experience and it's 
and to this day I'm still validating my experience and I'm still got my little quirky things that throw me off in life that I'm working with and it's just but that inner part has just grown and grown and become you know just more solid inside me than ever and that's that's what I love about MSI that's why I I work for MSI because I love it and I just I get so much out of it you know one of my favorite stories about when we first became the Prez is Paul and Vincent were out of town and I talked and I was on the phone with JR and I said and back when we first started we were kind of moving gingerly you know we were taking responsibility for things that we hadn't in the past and I told JR well I, I don't want to make a mistake on this thing and I forget exactly what it was but he goes ah go ahead make some mistakes you know and I what I got from that was you know it's okay to to, to you know, put yourself out there and to make mistakes and learn from them and all that. And he, he's given us little course corrections over the years. I remember one time Paul and I were really involved in a project and we were having dinner with Jer and some other people and Jer said, hey, make sure you're keeping Vincent informed. And it was like, oh yeah, you know, even though Vincent wasn't directly involved in this thing, it was really important that he, <clears throat> he kept up to speed. And I think it really shifted at that point from then on We've always done our best to keep each other informed. Even if it, you know, if one of us is traveling, and uh, the other, the others will you know email and say, "Hey, this is going on." We're, when we're together in LA, you know, we'll meet a couple times a day, sometimes even just to you know touch base and keep each other informed. I remember in the in the early days of the presidency, going to GR and asking him uh, about different things. Like, what do you think of this? And what do you think? And what should we, should we do here? And almost inevitably, it became sort of a, a, a joke almost. He said, well, what do you think? And then every time he would bounce the ball back at me, forcing me to both like think it through and really like come up with a recommendation. And to the point where you know, then I knew not to go to him with a question without having a recommendation. We could do this, we could do that. And then my recommendation is let's do this because, and then have all the the backup reasons for it. And the funny thing about it is, is that uh, it reminded me a lot of my dad, because my dad was very much like that with me. Uh, and uh, so it, it was very interesting to have it reflected back to me again in a whole different context. Um, so that was one of the ways that you know, I would say uh, I got trained anyway. I don't know about Mark and Paul in that regard. Um, there was another thing that I had a moment ago and is gone, so maybe I'll come around back around to it. Over to Paul. <laughs> um, I was uh, in the IHOP class that we're doing at uh, Aprano and online. Uh, so there's a class that we're doing through PTS called uh, IHOP, which is Intention, Health, Openness, and Prosperity. And uh, we were doing it as either the IHOP 1 or the IHOP 2. Um, and we were playing a meditation called the Heartfelt Meditation. And uh, that's one I recommend to everybody, by the way. It's my absolute favorite meditation of John Rogers. And in it, he has us breathing through the heart and breathing God and in and God out, and then love in and love out, I think. And then at some point, way deep into the meditation, he said, and if you say the name John Roger, then you may feel an awareness burst forward and you'll know what all this is about. And I heard that, and um, I, at that, from that point on, I started talking about this thing called the John Roger Energy Field. And um, because I think Mark and Vanson, I know, will agree with me, that no matter what we do, we're very aware that John Roger has this whole thing handled for us, and he's just allowing us and everybody else on MSI staff to have our experiences and to have our moments. But the fact of the matter is when we've been really stuck, somehow, uh, I don't like to use the word magically, you know, because I don't want to imply magic, but literally magically, a solution will appear or someone will come. Um, and it's just like, whoa, why were we worrying? And, and this has happened so consistently. I mean, all the time I've been on staff, but particularly as a, a presidency, when you feel a certain weight of responsibility so it's easy to get contracted or get into ego or feel that. And if we can keep in mind that this, this John Roger energy field, that although Joe isn't giving us as much direction, we still go to him for direction, but it's certainly as much verbal direction, then it has in a way forced us to go inside more and attune more. 
but with that awareness that the, the John Roger presence is even bigger than ever if we can just get out of the way long enough to really access it and allow it through. So to me, that's the, 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 the major lesson for all the time that I've been in MSIA. I can get into a narrow ego perspective or just let that go and open up to why I came into MSIA in the first place. Now, it's magnificent because it's loving, it's expansive, it's joyful. Uh, you know, what more does one want? It's a, it's a holiday. <laughs> Um, what do you miss most about JR? And he's still alive, but what, what would you say you miss the most? One of the, the, the reasons I came into MSIA, again, to me, um, I can't divorce that. Although I was looking for a spiritual path, I mean, John Roger the man has always been um, uh, what it's been all about for me, that, that connection. And, um, and it's precious, and it, it goes on, and it's alive very much so. But um, the, the two factors that were just like amazing for me is first of all his quality of unconditional loving. Um, I had very loving parents, so it wasn't what I was looking for love. But uh, the level, he showed me what loving was and what loving could be and demonstrated that. But that may not have been enough. What really clinched it for me was the humor. I mean, he was funny, he was sharp, he had a twinkle in his eye, he had that kind of cheekiness, that adorability, that cuteness in a way. Not that he couldn't really come on strong, um, but that to me was, uh, that, that was it. It, it. It's the humor, and he says over and over again, talks about it and demonstrates it, and um, that was just the most awesome thing. One thing that's been really interesting, especially I'd say in the last five years, is you know, as a presidency, running things administratively, running things by JR and John Morton in terms of our, uh, what we're doing. And, but in the last five years, it's really been more and more on us. Um, you know, we'll run things by JR, and, but it's really, you know, we can tell we're really the ones administratively keeping the thing going and the responsibilities on us and uh, what's great is all the training that we got to get to this point has supported us perfectly and um, you know just like Paul was saying earlier is everything runs really well with the JR energy field and just when we think things are going south you know we realize south is the direction we want to go or something shifts or you know whatever but um, it's it's all good and and just you know these teachings to make the best and to learn from what's happening and uh, it just it just it gives us the right attitude and um, and I, I love it you know I, I, when your parents get older you know you end up taking care of them and in a way I feel like you know we're really holding the stewardship for what John Roger created and that's you know one of our our key themes that we go on is how can we make sure that we honor this the works that that he's brought forward and make sure they get out there and are preserved the, the two things I remember J.R. telling me early on is one is uh, there isn't a, really anything I need to teach you. I just need to help you remember what you already know. And, and then the other thing he said almost at this, uh, right after that was uh, your main challenge is going to be getting out of your own way. So, so as a presidency and, you know, role, to me it's, it's been very helpful because when I feel stuck or when I feel like something isn't clear, I say, how am I getting in my own way? And then trying to access what I already know in a sense. So try to bypass my personality, ego, and say, okay, what's really going on here? Go deeper and get out of the way and see what's there. What, excuse me, what's there. So th those have been two very helpful keys for me. Uh, J John Roger, to me, in my experience anyway, was, uh, has always been adverse to predicting the, the, the future. Um, and when I, certainly in the early days when I tried to get him to do that, he said, uh, now you're getting into fortune telling and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and um, so uh, I, for myself, I have faith, so to speak, or confidence or the experience of, of the John Roger energy field. And I feel that he set up an energy field for us that we need to follow. And we need to stay in that. Our responsibility is how can, we, how can we stay on track with that. And that's where the teachings kick in in full force. 
Can, you know, uh, are we doing our spiritual exercises? Are we calling in the light? Are we attuning? Are we maintaining the loving consciousness? Are we listening to spirit? All of those things uh, are not just, um, you know, we're going to do that occasionally because uh, for some reason it just seems to be almost, has to be almost like a, a moment to moment thing. Uh, that it's just very easy to get off track. And then I come back to the presidency. Well, what's the advantage? Well, uh, do I get off track? Absolutely, I do. But I have two, two buffers here at either side of me, metaphorically and physically right now, that can just go, hey, Paul, you know, you just get, you're going to be wigged out here or I'll take a break or I don't see it that way. And then we come back on track. So uh, extremely fortunate in, in that respect. Nevertheless, what does coming back on track mean? Coming into the energy and... Um, and it's JL's created it for us. So in terms of the future and the vision of the future, just to continue the work that JR has set in motion. And the body of teachings that he has given us is so immense that we can certainly spend the rest of our lifetimes mining it because we really have, I wouldn't say scratched the surface. We're pretty deep into the surface, but, but there's a, still a long way to go. And, um, and I'm enjoying it through, as I mentioned, this uh, class, intention, health, openness, and prosperity, because it's, it's so rich, not only for our inner journeys, the spiritual journey, but also just how we, we function in the world, the practical spirituality which JR has laid out for us. Yeah, it's rich in, in another way, too. And Paul was saying there was this meditation that he'd heard for years and years and years, and then he just heard something new in it that he'd either not noticed or whatever, and it just opened it up to a whole new dimension for him. So, you know, like, like you said, just mining what we already have. Jer has always kind of indicated that MSI is his baby, you know, the, the organization that is really most dear to his heart. It's the one that supported him. And, you know, we want to just make him, keep MSI strong, keep the teachings out there for those who are looking for them, supporting the, the traveler. We tried to pin Jer down on, oh, well, what about this and in the future? And he kind of said, well, you know, hopefully Spirit's going to let you know. So we have to trust in Spirit, too. Um, I think our primary responsibility is making the teachings available. Jer has told us that. And, and also over time, he's become also making them accessible with the Internet in particular. He's, opened up a whole new range of, of you know, how we can make it accessible. And um, there, there was a, a conversation I had with JRS maybe 20 years ago in, in New York, I remember, at, at breakfast, and uh, where he told me, you know, every, every 150 years or so, a traveler comes along and he sort of updates the teachings to a more contemporary version of, of them. And he said that was one of the things he was doing. So because we're talking about, as Paul was mentioning, the incredible body of teachings that Jair has left us. So, um, so you know, I listened to that and I said, okay, so we, at least we want to make them available for the next 150 years or so until they get updated again. And, and um, that alone I is a big job, Say, creating the, the solid foundation so the, the means are there to keep it going. And uh, if, if we do that successfully, I think that would be a, a major thing for us. Yeah, integral to the, the vision we've been speaking about has been, of course, uh, Vansal just reminded me really in what he was saying about the technology that we have. And uh, we are now, MSI is now a global community in real time. In the old days, you know, starting off in, um, in, in England, back in the 70s, uh, the movement newspaper would arrive uh, at, uh, at that point, what we now call the New Day Health. And that was really the connection. That was it, or a phone call. Um, but uh, now it's all instant. It's happening in real time. We are connected. It's real. And once we start to feel that more and more and to really, again, mine or access what that can really mean to us, um, I think then we'll see that we'll, we'll move forward across the planet, and that's just a wonderful time. So that's great. Look into the camera. You can start with Benson and tell Jerry who you like to... Uh, uh, Jerry, I love you. Um, this year, so. One of the things that, that uh, I've always felt with you that was, I've never had with anybody else is that you know me from the inside out, and you understand me from the inside. So. 
you're probably the only person in the world that I feel like I've never had to explain myself to because every time I would try to, you already showed me you, you understood and you knew. So that's like an incredible gift. And uh, I love you so much, and I couldn't imagine life without you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John Roger. Um, I love you. You're, you're everything to me. Um, you've just uh, awakened my heart, and um, I just ask that you continue to do so. Thank you so much. Uh, JR, uh, you've, you're a father to me. You're a best friend. I wish or I, I, I love working with you. I love this work, and I, I love you. What else can I say? <laughs>